Hello and welcome to Comic Culture. I'm Terrence Dollard, a professor in the Department of Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. My guest today is author Blake Scott Ball. Blake, welcome to Comic Culture. Hi, thanks for having me. Blake, your book is Charlie Brown's America, and I, I don't want to screw up the, the subtitle. It's The Popular Politics of Peanuts? Is That's that right. Okay. It's a really fascinating book. I left my copy at home, but I've been reading it throughout the week. And you have done a lot of research into a lot of different subjects with Peanuts. So I'm wondering, what is it about these characters in this comic strip that made you want to do copious amounts of research? Well, I, I figured if I was going to have to do copious amounts of research on anything, uh, uh, Peanuts would be a great place to spend my time. Um, although it did did get uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of jokes and and uh, uh, side looks from my uh, grad school fellows, but um, the the thing that really interested me um, was the fact that. Uh, first of all, that Peanuts was just so immensely popular. It was it was so well known. It's so uh, just ubiquitous in American culture. Um, and I, as a kid, found it um, sometimes confusing uh, because it wasn't quite as um, it didn't really follow the model of of uh, a lot of the the comedy and and children's entertainment that I was used to uh, by by the '90s. Um, it wasn't always immediately funny. It wasn't particularly uh, action packed, and uh, and so uh, I I became very curious about what what was it about this thing that seemed to uh, appeal to folks, and um, that's when I discovered the um, the volumes of, of letters uh, that were uh, at the Schultz archive and began reading as the fans told us themselves what it was that they saw in the in the comic strip. It's, it's fascinating because, you know, growing up in the 70s, Peanuts was a television staple. You would, every Halloween, get ready for the Great Pumpkin. You'd get ready for the Charlie Brown Christmas special. I mean, there was an Arbor Day special. Uh, there was Peanuts everywhere, and they were always brought to you by the, the cleverly uh, linked in York's Peppermint Patties, uh, which was always great when it was the Thanksgiving episode and, and Peppermint Patty invites herself over. But you're absolutely right. These, these strips are filled with kids who talk about stuff that grown-ups are kind of talking about in a simpler way so that everybody kind of isn't offended and yet kind of makes a point whichever side they want to make that point. And you, in the book, describe this as the wishy-washy politics of Charles M. Schultz. So what is the wishy-washy politics? Great question. Um, well, uh, wishy-washiness is, is um, a way that Lucy often uh, described Charlie Brown in the comic strip. Uh, it's also a way that Charles Schultz uh, would describe his own way of thinking sometimes in interviews. And what it is, is uh, in practice, is sort of this, this tremendous skill that Charles Schultz had at, um, uh, at, at both uh, sort of um, ambiguity um, and polysemy, which, uh, you know, uh, the ability to sort of present a thing um, that that could be read in multiple different so even competing uh interpretations and so um schultz is very careful not to be uh, offensive to his wide audience but at the same time he doesn't he he uh does not avoid topics that were blatantly offensive and controversial in in its in uh in the time and so uh the vietnam war uh, appears, um, uh, school integration and racial integration appears, uh, issues of, uh, about, um, family planning, um, and, and global population appear often. Uh, so, so all of these sorts of things that were, um, that were, uh, deeply controversial. He talks about in ways that start conversations, but don't necessarily, um, uh, sort of um, uh, ostracize any one viewpoint in that conversation. And that's different from strips like Doonesbury, where Trudeau is definitely letting his point of view come through his work. And I know that Schultz didn't really like uh, the Doonesbury strip because of that, or maybe because of the art. Uh, but it, it seems that there is, um, you know, that, that fine balance between bringing something up and then going too far. And, and one of the things in your book is that you are taking some of these broader topics, uh, you know, I believe uh, uh, Crosshatch is Beautiful is a very uh, uh, clever 
chapter title. Uh, there was a chapter about the Vietnam War. And so when you're kind of going into these issues, uh, are you aware ahead of time that, that these are topics that he's covered? Or is this something that just becomes evident to you as you start going through archives of, of the thousands of strips that he did in the 50 years of Peanuts? I, I would say, uh, as I as I was researching, the the thing that first alerted me to this, uh, to some of these topics, was the fan letters. Uh, the fan letters that were in the collections at the Schultz Archive out in uh, Santa Rosa, California. There were, in some cases, particular topics uh, that that people wrote quite often about, or particular strips that people wrote quite often about. And so those were sort of, uh, those letters sort of gave me a starting place to, to go back and, and dig into particular periods in the strip and go, okay, what's the, you know, what's the hubbub here? But also then um, there were, there were other uh, topics, certainly that as I was, as I was reading through the strips themselves day by day, year by year, uh, that, that really start to emerge. Uh, for instance, the way that, um, really from the beginning, the unique way that Charles Schultz treats female characters in, in his in his world. Uh, they, they were, um, uh, they could be quite atypical, especially w once you get uh, uh, characters like uh, Lucy Van Pelt and, and, uh, and Peppermint Patty, um, who in many ways are sort of the, not only some of the uh, most dominant personalities, but also in many cases, some of the most adept uh, in, in skilled, most competent uh, uh, individuals in the strip. And Peppermint Patty is an interesting character because she is so uh, so bossy, uh, and we even have Marcy who always calls her <laughs> Sir, which is uh, a, a cause of, of great uh, uh, stress to Peppermint Patty, but she's the, the leader of the, the rival baseball team in uh, uh, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, which we were talking about uh, before we started taping. She's the leader of the, the girls team. Um, so when we are looking at characters like Peppermint Patty, she becomes sort of an icon uh, for, uh, well, I guess the counterculture for a lesbian culture. And this is something that Schultz is not necessarily happy with. So how does he sort of ride that wave and, and still work with the character and, and not feel like he has to pander one way or the other? Well, that's that's a great question. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's it's incredible. That's that's one of the um, the particular places where we see. Uh, the audience sort of um, uh, taking a, a reading and interpretation of, of those uh, of that, uh, especially Peppermint Patty and Marcy, uh, reading those characters in a way that seems very obvious to the audience, but is not at least publicly what the author intends. And I, I think the way that uh, the way that Charles Schultz um, sort of navigated this is is the way that he navigates uh, a lot of his issues which is that um uh I, I think he was um pretty adamant about being he had a very strong understanding of what the characters were uh who the characters were and the characters that we see last uh in peanuts are the characters i think that he most clearly is able to define um their uh, their worldview, their interactions and personalities, and uh, and and we see he he talks about this often um, that uh, he would write strips, um, not not typically with a plot in mind, but instead uh, writing from uh, the point of view of a character. So so how would a character handle this situation and and kind of write from there. And this is why, you know, one of uh, one of the classic skills that Schultz had is taking a situation that you've seen in the strip before. You kind of know how you think it's going to end, and yet uh, it throws in some twist. The character, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe a, a different uh, blend of characters produces a different result. And so I, I think Schultz, um, I think with Peppermint Patty, Schultz was writing a character who was um to the world in many ways was very self-confident very self-assured but in other ways felt very personally unsure and and unsecure and uh and is sort of struggling with um that that problem of of being viewed one way in society but yet feeling quite different in your personal experience and and so i think schultz 
wrote true to that. And that just so happened to uh, coincide uh, quite well with the experience of, of many, uh, uh, many uh, women that, that, could, that could see themselves in that experience. And it is interesting because when we look at Peppermint Patty's backstory, she doesn't really have a great home life. Her dad works nights. She's never uh, prepared for school. She doesn't seem to have a mother who lives at home with her. And at one point, you know, she, she has to have Snoopy come over to keep her company so she can go to sleep. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, a very sad life that she has, and yet she always has this very upbeat, positive, assertive, outgoing personality. I mean, she's super friendly to everyone. Um, and it, again, I guess it speaks to Schultz's ability to kind of mine that, that wishy-washiness where there's tragedy and yet there's likability in that tragedy. Absolutely. Um, and, and, uh, they also even, even at one point Schultz deals with, um, uh, it's, it's very strongly, um, insinuated that, uh, that Peppermint Patty's parents are divorced, which was an experience that. Uh, Schultz was having himself in the 1970s and having that experience, uh, you know, that, that change in the family, in the family dynamic. Uh, um, but, um, but also demographically, we can see Americans across the country where we're experiencing uh, that in, in a new way. And, and so uh, just as I think, I think he does um, later on in the nineties in a CBS special, the one where one of the schoolmates becomes sick with cancer, it's sort of dealing with how, how do you, how do you process this? And the character actually dies in, in the program and, and, and the children are, are dealing with this emotion. I, I think um, Schultz would take these opportunities to, to see himself as a, as a voice to help um, to comfort and reassure, but also offer perhaps some guidance. Uh, for um, for young people reading the strip that that might be feeling the same way. I guess it goes back to the the same point that we've kind of covered that that Schultz has this great way of bringing up a topic without uh, really you know telling you how to think. Just let's think about it in general. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of the things that he does is there's a, an underlying Christian theme to Peanuts, and this is certainly something that we see in the Charlie Brown Christmas special when Linus says lights please, and then goes and tells everyone the the true meaning of Christmas. Um, but in your book, you talk about the, the first strip appears and then uh, a minister sends a, a note to the paper saying, you know, how terrible there's a little boy and they say how much they hate him. We don't need this kind of hate in the world. So how does Schultz's personal uh, beliefs kind of work their way in so that we have this this kind of, uh, I guess, Christian feel to the strip without it being overtly Christian? The, wow, that's a that's a that's a great question. I, I think he um, certainly tried to um, uh, tried to express uh, elements of of things that I think he found thought provoking, um, elements of his faith that he found thought provoking, elements of philosophy, and and sometimes his religion and philosophy kind of intersect. But again, and, and this is um, I I argue that in the book that he does have a period in the late. 50s into the early 60s, where he seems particularly evangelical in in some of his endeavors, uh, uh, trying to communicate a bit of a more overt message. But by the mid and late 60s, in interviews, he's he's talking about it, saying, you know, I, I really think that religion is the kind of thing that that is important uh, to discuss and to talk about. But yet, it's the sort of thing that um, that should be done. Uh, personally, let's sit down. Let's have have a conversation. Let's get to know each other. Talk about this um, uh, because I, I think um, uh, he was becoming uncomfortable with some of the uh, potential misinterpretations of, of of things and things like that. But particularly in the in the Christmas special, I think one of the ways that he successfully navigates um, introducing a particular sort of religious perspective without becoming preachy or, or offensive is that really when you, when you watch that, um, watch that program, there's, there's sort of a dual message going on, uh, in the program. One that is, um, very broadly, uh, accessible, this sort of consumerist critique of, of how, just how we, we, we have, we have spoiled, um, a, a special time uh, by marketing it to death, which, which, you know, we might say ironically in the, you know, coming to us through this program, uh, uh, funded by Coca-Cola, but, 
Um, but uh, so there's this sort of broad message about uh, about consumerism, uh, but then there is this more more targeted message uh, about uh, about uh, how the nativity of Christ is sort of missing from from our Christmas story. And so then again, we can see this in uh, in the audience response uh, that that there are those who who uh, respond to the anti-consumers message. And then there are those who respond particularly to that nativity scene and say, wow, you know, a program that actually dared to mention uh, Jesus or read the Bible on, on primetime television. And it's funny when we watch that special uh, now, you know, I remember watching it as a kid, I remember watching it uh, in my, my 20s, I remember watching it last year, uh, and there was a big uh, you know, mix up because it wasn't on ABC last year, it was on PBS, and it was only on mm -hmm. at this right. one time because Apple bought the rights to it. Uh, but there was such a cultural backlash that it wasn't on at Christmas uh, that it just, again, speaks to the longevity and the, the, the power of Schultz's message. Um, now, you, you mentioned um, Schultz kind of uh, thinking that things should be kept private. And yet, you know, his private life is one of those things that we don't know too much about. And you, in your book, talk about mm -hmm. how he was involved with certain, you know, political movements. He had correspondence going with, with President Reagan. Um, and a lot of times the strip would reflect his hobbies. When he took up tennis, well, so did Snoopy. You know, when you are going back and you're looking at Schultz as the, the person versus Schultz as the artist, how do you, you know, kind of look at that and, and see the connection, but also see the, you know, the, the I guess, individuality of both person in art this can be a really challenging question for uh for scholars dealing with um uh, dealing with the work um of a particular author the the question of how much um in some of in some of my um current research projects i i'm i'm digging through and trying to figure out okay when a when a when a writer uses a particular sort of controversial political viewpoint, is that actually their viewpoint or are they, um, you know, are they imbuing this to a character and, and giving you know, and, and kind of trying to, uh, track those things down. So it can be, it can be dicey. Um, I think, um, the the places uh, as a as a scholar that I was most interested in in the life of Schultz were uh, were the places where um, where his life um, and experience were uh, directly impacting um, uh, either either viewpoints that he articulates in the strip or uh, certain per personality angles that uh, that he uses uh, with the characters. Schultz would tell you that. Um, uh, in interviews, they would say, you know, are you Charlie Brown? Sometimes he would say, yeah, you know, I guess I'm a bit of a Charlie Brown. But uh, but uh, in many cases, he says, actually, uh, each of these characters is sort of a piece of my personality. He says, some days I'm Lucy. <laughs> and <laughs> I've even heard a few stories from folks around Santa Rosa that when they ran into a Lucy Day in Charlottesville. Uh, but... Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, it, it can be, can be hard to parse out. And I, I think as scholars, we have to be very careful to read too, uh, too much of, um, very careful not to make mistakes of, of sort of crossing our wires there. Sometimes the things in, in the art are not the artist's perspective. Um, uh, and some, and sometimes they are, uh, so it's, it can be hard to tell. <laughs> And one of the things that's that's hard is, uh, as a kid, like you mentioned in, in the book, um, you know, you can read a strip and you don't know exactly why it's funny. I remember reading a collection of, of uh, Peanuts strips um, and not knowing who Sam Sneed was, but I, I knew that Linus always admired him. And I never knew who Joe Garagiola was, but I know that Charlie Brown always wanted his bubblegum card. And it would be years later until I realized, oh, he's the guy in NBC with Vin Scully who's calling the World Series. Um, so, you know, as a kid, you might have to go to uh, an adult and try and find out why this is funny or why this isn't funny. So, you know, in your book, you talk about having to do that. But, you know, somehow Schultz is able to make me want to keep reading it, even if I don't get the, the story right. So, you know, in your experience, you know, how did that sort of keep you engaged? And, and you know, even though it wasn't necessarily the, the, the funniest joke to you, the next day you wanted to go back and read it. Yeah, well, I, I think um, I think one thing um that uh you you mentioned earlier in, in passing with uh 
uh, with uh, Gary Trudeau and and uh, Doonesbury that perhaps Schultz uh, didn't like the art. Um, he uh, Schultz talked a lot about the importance of design, um, the importance of attractive design in in your uh, in your artwork, and and I, I think um, that is one thing that uh, that that he nailed. Uh, it was sort of his style uh, and, and design of the characters, but also of, of the, the, the settings that this world that felt very real, but at the same time was, was extremely minimalist. And, uh, I think design was, uh, was a part of it. Um, the, the characters and their, and their, uh, their, um, uh, movements and, and gestures and things were very attractive. Um, I think another part of it was even in the, times when I couldn't exactly understand what, uh, what the point was or, or what something there's this sort of air of, of, um, uh, what would the word be like air of intelligence or, uh, profundity in, in, uh, in peanuts. And so, um, I think what was unique about it was in, in my, just my personal child experience, I, I've heard this from other folks. Uh, what was unique about it was that in the cases when I didn't understand, I wasn't turned off. I was actually intrigued to want to, to want to understand. I want to be part of this conversation. Um, and, uh, and so, um, and I think, I think, you know, the places where, where it did hit and connect, it connected closely enough that, uh, you know, I wanted to have more of those experiences. I wanted to, I wanted to find the next, uh, uh, strip that, uh, that I could, identify with. Now, I, I see we have just a few minutes left. You have about four or five minutes left in our conversation. And I just wanted to ask, I've seen in your, uh, your bio that you have done a lot of research with peanuts throughout your academic career. And I'm just wondering, at what point are you, um, you're looking at the, these characters and it's sort of like you scratch the surface and you want to keep digging. Uh, is that sort of the case where you just found that one little thing and it was like, gosh, this, this, there's a lot to this and I can go here and I can go there and I can go the other and all these other places. Is, is that sort of the enthusiasm that you were finding? Yes, absolutely. It, it started as a, it started as, as sort of uh, 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 pulling a single thread and, uh, and, uh, and, and a tapestry started uh, unraveling there. Um, and, and quite honestly, there, um, at times there was so much, uh, Peanuts was just so, as I said, just so ubiquitous and, and touched uh, on on so many issues across 50 years. You know, you think of trying to converse with a, with a group of people for daily for 50 years that uh, at times it was really daunting to sort of isolate. OK, what what are some uh, some major themes that uh, that we can discuss and not just feel like, you know, not just let this turn into a, a, a strip by strip commentary, of, you know, of, of peanuts, uh, which which might be a worthwhile volume. Maybe we should talk to Gary Groth, the <laughs> fanographics folks, about uh, about doing that. That could be fun. We talked about the 50 years of, of Charles M. Schultz doing peanuts. Um, one of the things that I uh, will always be a little bit disappointed in was the final strip. And I, this is a personal opinion, mm. uh, but having mm. uh, you know, read the strip for years and, and knowing that one time in 50 years, Charlie Brown's team won a baseball game uh, and it was a glorious day. Uh, but that last strip was a very nice thank you to the readers and certainly very heartfelt on Schultz's part. But you know, gosh, wouldn't you have just loved to see Charlie Brown kick that football or would that have killed the magic for everybody? Mm. You know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know if you've seen um, the uh, Charles Schultz did a did a final interview um, uh, NBC's Today Show with uh, or with uh, Al Roker, and uh, and that's one of the. Th it seems that Sh that Schultz even himself was conflicted about maybe I should have let him kick the football. Um, you know, I really think I, I love the I love the um, it, just the. Uh, it's kind of heart wrenching to me when I read that panel of uh, the, the opening panel and Charlie Brown's answering the phone and say, I, I think he's writing. I think he's I think he's writing, uh, you know, and referring to Snoopy out on the typewriter and he's typing out this letter. Um, so I do think that that's beautiful. But I think it. I think there could have been some real magic to, you know, just one glorious final hu hurrah. Um, but, uh, you know, in some ways, I think it's also kind of perfect for the mood of Peanuts uh, that that it ends 
uh, with this um, uh, sort of melancholy, um, just short of the finish line. Well, Blake, they are telling me that we are out of time. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me today. It's been a really fast half hour. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I want to thank everyone at home for watching Comic Culture. We will see you again soon. Comic Culture is a production of the Department of Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke.